Hello YouTube, it's Doss Gregor, and welcome to an update on LFS. Wow, can you believe that in another week we'll have been a month on LFS? It, it's hard to believe that that time has gone by, and so far, <laughs> I haven't blown it up. It's still working. I have done a few things. I was like, crap, what have I done? A balloon? I, I think I messed it up. Now what am I going to do? How do I fix it? I've messed up my networking, trying to figure out some things. I guess that's what I'll, I'll, my first topic will be. I have uh, messed with doing the kernel a couple different times because with the kernel in the current LFS 8.1, every time my network would go to shut down and I'm using WPA supplicant, I would get a kernel panic if I did a reboot or a halt and it would just freeze. Now at first I thought, well, okay, Maybe I need to recompile WPA Supplicant with a newer version, but no, I'm using the most recent version, so that wasn't the issue. So then the next step was, all right, what kernel am I running? And let's just go quick over here, and let's go to my sources directory and do a quick ls. And so... It initially came with Linux 4.12.7, which is what it told me to install. And that was the one that was constantly doing the kernel panics. Not liking to go backwards on kernels, I went to Linux 4.14.13. Now, this one required me to do some funky stuff. I had to install some extra utilities just so it would compile. But I did get it to compile, but I was seeing some really weird, random stuff going on with it. So I decided the best thing to do would probably downgrade it back to what Gen 2 says is the latest, greatest, and LTS, uh, long-term stable, 4976. So I installed that, built my kernel, and since I did that, no more kernel panics, no more problems, things are much more stable. So my suggestion to all those who have been following these random videos about LFS at this point in January of 2018, so I can date it so that you're not watching this going, oh, what, you, know, you gotta have that relevancy towards to what that is in regards. I hate it when things just say, oh yeah, get the latest. Well, latest as of when? <laughs> But either way, my suggestion is not to download the 412, but to go ahead and get the latest um, LTS stable. And you can still follow the same instructions as, as set forth in LFS. Just do that instead. I would have saved myself a lot of headaches if I would have gone that route instead of using 412 that it had in the manual. So that was problem one fixed and all good to go. Another thing was that um, I think I mentioned in my last video about using the terminal application for XFCE because I'd already built it when I first built this with XFCE. And now, of course, I'm in i3. And so I was looking at UXVT and I've customized it, themed it. I really like how it works. It still has a, a few quirks that I'm not too crazy about. But if we reset my screen here, eh, my script, yeah, it's got a nice look and feel. I still have the colors that I like. And as you see, I have also changed my wallpaper a bit. If we go to a page that has nothing, there we are. One of the nice things that I was looking for was some good LFS wallpaper. And of course, there's no LFS wallpaper that has the i3 um, theming either so I found the um, the symbol there the logo that's the word I'm looking for <laughs> and I went ahead and incorporated GIMP into LFS set it up compiled it got that working so I could put some layers and some transparency and I was able to incorporate that with this nice little Linux background paper that I found on the web now, LFS also has a lot of neat wallpapers that they have in their BLFS section if you dig in, down and look for them. And those were nice, but I just, they, some of them were just too busy. And when you get too much in a wallpaper, especially if, for instance, you like to have transparency here, 
just so it's not so blase, uh, that starts to interfere with being able to read what's on there. And this I, I find is really nice when I'm compiling and I can look at the code as it passes through and be able to see what I'm typing to without that background getting in place. Now a lot of people might not like transparency with their console. They might want it uh, to be less, you know, more, more of just a solid color. And of course that makes sense because you're talking about text and the last thing you want is your picture messing up with your text so that you can't read it proper. As I always say, function over fashion is much more important. Build your application to run before you go making it look pretty. <laughs> it's more important that it works than that it looks good. <laughs> Some other things that I've worked with, uh, just to catch you up, I've gone ahead and installed LibreOffice. That took a lot of doing. There were so many dependencies to do, but the BLFS handbook did a great job pointing me to everything that I needed for that. I've also thought, you know, you need a couple games when you're when you're uh, having your leisure time. So I went and I looked for some games and I found a few, my two favorite pastimes, uh, Mahjong and uh, Sudoku. So I found a GD, I think it's GDK Mahjong. Well, let's just start looking at Mahjong. X Mahjong, that's it. Very nice game. It runs really well in LFS. It's got some really nice elegant tiling and different setups. If you go into, for instance, um, we'll go back over to here and type in xmajong dash dash help. Yeah, they've got some tile sets and they've got some layouts that you can use. And so there are different things that you can check on to see what's available. And I was trying to remember off the top of, oh, it's the dash dash list, that's what it is. I was trying to remember what would tell me what that all is, so you can see it. So you can see they have a lot of different layouts, a couple different tile sets, and you can change your background to default or green right now. It works really well, I've been very happy with it. And I've also been able to find, let me get back over here, close that, uh, open up Sudoku and I was trying to get um, Gnome Sudoku to work. I was also trying to get K Sudoku to work. Um, but this is the only one that really works well and it can be very difficult to play. I've played it a couple times and you know it, it takes a long while. I'm not the best at Sudoku but if I'm looking for something that's just take some brain teasing and all the rest, then that's one of the games that I really enjoy. And that brings me to my other subject. How do you incorporate games from other desktop managers into LFS when you're using a window manager? I really didn't think that it would be that hard, but it really, really, really is. I wanted to put, I use K-Sudoku all the time over on my other box. Now, as many of you know, I'm still running i3 on there, but before that I was running Plasma 5, and so all of that works. And because I already have that infrastructure built into the system, it just runs perfectly in i3. And I thought, well, you don't have to build the whole KDE system, the whole Plasma system, just to get something running. You should only have to build the back-end framework, and then it should function. So I first start off, okay, well, let's get the program we want, K-Sudoku, and let's see when we compile it, what it errors with. And so it erred with uh, something like KXML, blah, blah, blah. So I downloaded and set up a directory for building for the KDE environment plasma so that I could get K-Sudoku to work. And I downloaded that one and I'd try to compile it. And it said, oh, it's missing K-Blah. So I download K-Blah and download it. And the K-Blah might say it's missing K-Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the rabbit hole gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And you keep downloading new packages because of dependencies and more, de more packages. And if we go, for instance, back into here and we go into my downloads, sources, directory, and I created this KDE directory, 
I ended up having to install all those applications that you see there and probably didn't need Pixmon because that didn't work so I'm going to get rid of Pixmon because that was the last thing I was tempting to do and I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, we don't need that and we don't need this because those did not work proper so why is this not working? I don't need that. I need this. There we go. Remove those. I don't like to keep packages that fail badly and don't work proper. Another weird thing is I had a, one program required some sort of an app stream CLI to be able to compile something else. and So I had to grab that. To grab that, I needed, the, I believe, the Mason and a couple other things. So it was weird. I had to go through so much just to try to get one game to work and i am so close to I, I wanted it to be successful i really wanted to be like yo guys check this out a lot of work but hey the payoff's great i can now play one of my favorite games with the interface of kde that i like so much let me show you what happens let's go back over to screen seven here if i try to run k sudoku and I don't remember where I was with the GNOME side. I get this far and I'm like, Woo! Yeah! It's working! Let's play this game. So I play it. It says, alright, difficulty. Yeah, let's do this. Um, I wanted to do this. Uh, um, uh, anything? You know? Anything? Easy, very easy. Yeah, give me very easy. I want to do very easy. Yeah, nothing. Come on, yo ho, anything. All the menus work. Everything else works, and nothing else. So I thought, okay, I wanted so much to have that. I've been pushing off doing this video because I have been trying so hard to get this to work for you guys. Because I wanted to show you that you it could be done. <sighs> Just not by me, probably. <laughs> But if we go out of here and let me get out of that and uh, close this window, go back over to here. Um, if we do uh, K Sudoku and we run it, these are the errors I get. Now, now, this is something good to think about. When an application doesn't work right in Linux, one of the best things to do is go to the command line interface and run that command and see what kind of errors pop up in the command line interface. A lot of times you'll find out that you're missing a dependency or you're missing something else that you can easily say, oh, okay, well, let's install that, configure that, set that up, and suddenly you got a working program, especially in a GUI application that you try to run it through a menu and you're like, What's going on? Nothing's running. Nothing's popping up. No errors. No nothing. Go to the command line interface. Run that same command line, and you will most likely get error, blah, 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 and a bunch of syntax that tell you exactly what the problem is. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you get this crypt. Well, it's not really cryptic. You have, sometimes you get stuff you just don't understand. And then you got to go figure out <clears throat> what does that mean? I have Googled what this is saying, and Maybe someone out there is watching and says, Das, I, I, I know the problem. This is what you got to do. <laughs> eh, maybe, but we'll see. So if I run KSudoku on its own, it runs, and you see I'm getting this cannot find RC file, and I need to start looking in to see if I can figure out what's up with this RC UUI, because, yeah, it's the user interface that's not working. And then, of course, I've got these QPainter begin paint device return engine equals zero type two QPainter end painter not active aborted. So that makes me wonder what's wrong with QT that it doesn't like. Now, I do know that version 17 dot, I think 12 and 08 and all those they now finally compile against QT5. I had no problems now building it once I got the right libraries and KDE background framework. And you see it does start up this far, but you know, we start a game and boom, we get all these errors with the Q Painter. 
Now, I have looked up these errors. I've tried to find them. They point me to a lot of programming. They point me to a lot of places trying to, to tell me how to program my application. But I'm not the programmer. I'm just the end user trying to compile it and make it work. It's been a real chore to get where I'm at. Now, the good thing is I've learned a lot. And that's always important. You know, you, you learn things. You learn how to search for errors. It's one of the most, you know, this is what makes LFS stand out from a regular bin distribution or even a source distribution like Gen 2. If I had wanted K-Sudoku to work in Gen 2 and I had no KDE or Plasma installed, it would have pulled in all the proper framework, all the right libraries, everything else that was correct and needed for K-Sudoku to work. And without that desktop manager setup, it would have done all of that for me and it would have just worked. Now, it might have taken three or four hours, depending upon how strong the system was to compile all the right packages. But believe me, I have been working on trying to get this functioning since Friday. It's now two days later and this is all I've gotten. This is as far as I've gotten. I don't feel like I've failed because I learned a lot and now I can move forward with what I've done and eventually maybe in another week or two <laughs> a week or two uh, uh, we'll see yeah I might just learn to live with the GDK um, version of Sudoku that I did find that does work I might still go around I might tinker around to see how hard it would be to get the GNOME version of Sudoku working I have that in there. I don't recall where I was with it, though. Let's see what happens when I try to run GNOME Sudoku. Anything? Because I don't recall getting it to that point where it could do something, and it's not acting like it wants to. Let's see what happens when I try to run that here, because I don't recall. Oh, that's what I was running into. Yes, for some reason, GNOME version of Sudoku was trying to import GNOME with Python. Now, all of the information was pointing to PyGDK. I've got PyGDK installed. I've got everything that it keeps telling me to do working, but I cannot get it to import GNOME. Not at all. Um, I'm just, I'm flustered on that. That's why I gave up with trying to get the GNOME working. I could not get the import GNOME. So anybody watching this and wants to say, DOS, DOS, I thought you were better than this. I thought you knew what you were talking about. That's so simple, dude. Just do blah. Well, <laughs> Sometimes you just don't know. And the documentation just isn't there. Just like when I was building K-Sudoku, it kept coming up with a KF5 games not built. And I was trying to build that, but it kept trying to point me back to KDE Libs 4. KDE Libs 4 kept saying that KDE 4 config was missing. Well, I don't want to install KDE 4. I, won't, I don't, you know, I might need some of that support, but I don't want to start, because then you start getting into it requires, or at least it's looking for a QD 4 instead of QD 5. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to go into a direction where I'm installing a bunch of deprecated software for what I'm trying to run off of Plasma 5's internals. Now, granted, it's LFS and... Ah, it's confusing sometimes. You, you just got I just, I didn't want to go down that rabbit hole. No, I did find out that I needed a libs k gaming or something like that installed, and that went towards Qt5. Once I got that, I got the k5 uh, kf5 games uh, configs that it was looking for for CMake. And so, yeah, I figured it out. It was a little cumbersome, a little difficult, but I got there. 
another thing before I forget, the last video was talking about VirtualBox. And I almost called that a failure because I couldn't do it. But it's the reason why I couldn't do it is because of the 32-bit support required in VirtualBox, which I don't understand when you're in a 64-bit world and you have no desire to do anything with 32-bit. Why am I being forced to build 32-bit support? I understand what needs to be done to the system so that that will work. I'm just not willing to do it. I don't want to start all over. I'm going to stick with this. Now, one of my subs pointed out that, hey, there's another application out there called QEMU. Q-E-M-U. At first, I said, you know what? The main purpose of this was to help out another YouTuber who was having difficulty with VirtualBox. And I thought, you know, if you can install it from source, you can install it anywhere. Linux is Linux on 99.9% .9 of every distribution. So if you understand the source, then you can understand how everything should work and operate. And that being said, because I didn't have the right infrastructure with LFS, with 32-bit and 64-bit, I couldn't continue with that. And that was the main point of what I was trying to do with that. It wasn't to actually get an emulation software that I could personally use. This is only a Core i5. I really didn't think that this system was strong enough for that. But I went ahead and looked at Quemu and installed it, set it up. And I'll tell you, it is nice. If you don't mind the fact that it does not have natively a GUI system right out of the box, it's really nice to use if you don't mind command line interface. I was very easily able to set up scripts that could run ISOs and put me into a live DVD ISO. I was very easily able to set up commands to create a virtual hard drive, install that ISO into the hard drive, and now I've got a few things running. I had to rebuild my kernel again because I needed the KVM support, but once I rebuilt my kernel with that support, uh, the VirtualBox screams, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Quemu screams with the way I have it set up. It runs great on even this Core i5 system. It's a really really good alternative to VirtualBox if you're not afraid of the command line interface. I also did a little bit of research and there are many third-party GUI interfaces that will work with Quemu. So if it's like, oh, that's a showstopper DOS, I don't want to be in the command line interface, well, you have some alternatives. You can look at those and I'm sorry they're not off the top of my head. I hadn't planned on really talking about that part of it. But if you search on Quemu front ends, you can get them to work. Now, I've also been able to get a lot of other things running. I got uh, one of my favorite sound systems running. We go back over to here and we go into Excel. I have Excel running really nicely. It's got all my music library and things set up. I was listening to some some radio, but I've got my collection all set up here, and it all plays and works great. I can even LibriVox. You know, that's a, that's a better feature. You know, in LibriVox, I was listening. You know, it works. It's great. I I can actually see all the well, not all the books. I I need to talk to them about why I'm only seeing a certain number of. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Speak, Greg. Find your English. Find your words. I really like audiobooks, and the ones from Liverbox are all in the open domain and are free to listen to, and people have volunteered to set these up. I'm only seeing a certain amount of the book. I'm not seeing the whole library, so I need to find out why I'm not seeing the whole library. I'm only seeing a certain selection of them, and when I search, of course, I'm not finding them either. Uh, but all of it, all the rest of it's great. That took me a long time to figure out because there was nothing on LFS that told me, step one, do this, step two, do that. If it's in BLFS, if it's in LFS, they have excellent documentation. But when it's not, it's all about learning, struggling, and going through, and researching, and finding it. And if you've got the gumption to do it, 
you can succeed. It just takes a little bit of time. And you say, that's why. Why would you want to put yourself through so much pain? You know, someone told me the other day, LFS doesn't stand for Linux from scratch. LFS stands for Linux for Satis. Those who want to just cause themselves so much pain. <laughs> yes, LFS can be that way. Uh, but when you finally figure out what needs done and you get it working, that feeling of satisfaction is great. And when you can say, I'm running something strictly from source and running applications that have no instructions and I got them running good, that is very satisfying. I've really enjoyed working with LFS. My wife might say differently. She has seen the side of me off camera going, arr, arr, and knows that she will be very glad when I'm out of LFS and no longer doing LFS because she has seen how angry this has made me looking for some of the answers. She has seen how frustrated I've gotten to get things working and after failure, after failure, after failure, and then finally, success, yes. So, <laughs> LFS isn't for the light uh, user. It's definitely for the dedicated ones. Unless you just want to say, I read the manual. I did the work. It's running. It's work for functioning got no GUI, I just got a CLI. But hey, that is in itself a huge victory just to get that far. This time around, I wanted to put it on bare metal. I wanted to run it for a while. My actual goal for LFS is, one, to have gotten where I've gotten and get most all the software that I use in Gen 2 on a regular basis functioning and working in some form or fashion inside of LFS. Two, how long can I function in LFS before I completely brick the system because I did something way too far and I couldn't figure my way to back out of it? And three, is LFS truly functioning enough that you could use it as a daily driver? Now, I have seen some articles out there of users who have said, yes, I use LFS as a daily driver. They have got to be hardcore because I cannot imagine after three to six months being able to keep everything up to date without breaking a whole bunch of stuff the first time I started going through it to see, okay, what needs updated? Because without a certain set of package lists that tell me, update this first before you update that, I could see very easily the first time you try to maintain or do maintenance on LFS, you could easily brick everything. I'd like to stay on LFS for a couple months. I don't know how long I'll stay here, but I'm enjoying it. In fact, except for using my other box for research and finding out how did I get that configured here or there, I really haven't used Gen 2 for a little over a week and a half because huh, I've been compiling code for two to three weeks straight. Every time I have a chance, I'm working on something else to get it functioning. It is fun, but you need the time, the patience, and a really good search engine. <laughs> so if it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I hope you enjoy it. LFS isn't for the faint of heart, but if you work hard, you're willing to do the research, you can usually find the answers somewhere. And so far, I haven't bricked my system completely, and everything is still really great in the LFS world. Bye, guys.